Assalamu alaikum students, this is Bilal Adar for the subject of English, second year, and this is our lecture number 10, uh, <coughs> continued with using the scientific method. It is still unit number 2. Uh, in our previous lecture, we had discussed what is scientific method, what is critical thinking, and in this lecture, I would only explain the lesson to you, lesson uh, mainly tells us <coughs> how we have benefited by using the scientific method, Mo uh, especially with, during the last 100 years. It would be good if you keep your textbook in front of you. All of us have benefited greatly from the use of scientific method. We have benefited, all of us, the people of the world. We have benefited greatly, not only the scientists, but common people as well. We have benefited greatly by the use of scientific method. And we have benefited in solving problems related to the maintenance of health. Scientific method has helped us maintain better health. It has helped us in providing more food and in helping us to preserve food. Scientific method has helped us in the construction of better homes and scientific method has helped us in communication. Th uh, you can add, add another point. It has also helped us in transportation. Scientific method, with the help of scientific, scientific method, we have got now some changes in our life. First change, very clear, observable changes in lifestyle. Our lifestyle has changed. Second is our thinking has changed. Third thing is that we are less fearful. Because our thinking has changed, we are less fearful. The things our ancestors were afraid of, we are no more afraid of those things. We are more critical. By critical, I do not mean that we uh, criticize everything, but we think openly. And the last thing is that we have become open-minded. We are not prejudiced, we are not biased. Although uh, still there is a lot to be learned and a lot to be changed, but compared with 100 years back, we are more open-minded now. Uh, the lesson is given under four headings. They have divided it in four paragraphs. Better control of diseases. Let's first of all take this. The writers, there are two writers. The lesson says uh, that if you were born 100 or 200 years ago, let's say only 100 years ago, there were only 12% or 12.5% chances that you would be able to cross the age of 12 months. About 88% of the children born 100 years ago were unlucky. They would die before reaching uh, one year age. Before celebrating their first birthday, they would die because of certain diseases. He has named the diseases here. You can uh, well read them from the textbook. Uh, but it does not mean that when you have crossed your first year, you have completed your first year, you are out of danger. No, that was not so. Again, there are four or five diseases mentioned here, smallpox, measles, whooping cough, scarlet fever, fever, diphtheria. They were very common in children. Before reaching their sixth birthday, another tragedy was that out of those 12%, again, so many would die before crossing their sixth year. And the writer then says that those who crossed their 30th birthday were really lucky people. Because the diseases were so many. Actually, in uh, other words, you can say that was the age of survival of the fittest. 
जो फिटेस्ट होगा वो बचता जाएगा जो थोड़ा सा भी कमजोर होगा वो बीच में से निकलता जाएगा नो विद द डिस्कवरी ऑफ एंटीबायोटिक्स वो मोर देन हंड्रेड इयर्स अगो वेन एंटीबायोटिक्स वेन बैक्टेरियाज वर डिस्कवर्ड विद द इन्वेंशन ऑफ माइक्रोस्कोप्स द साइंटिस्ट सा दैट देर आर माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स विच आर क्रिएटिंग ट्रबल्स एंड डिजीज फॉर अस सो वेन दे हैड नोन द काज ऑफ द डिजीज the first thing when you know the cause of the disease the very first thing that you can do about that disease is you can prevent that when you know that malaria is spread by the uh, bite of mosquito you can prevent malaria by getting rid of mosquitoes you do not let mosquitoes bite you so you can get rid of malaria so this is how they discovered and the next stage is of course finding the treatment presently um, we are facing this covid 19 this virus in the very first week it was discovered that this disease is spreading because of a virus in next few weeks it was discovered that how this virus travels from one person infected person to other person how it spreads so preventive measures were started because of those preventive measures we have been able to save so many of the human beings in the world otherwise if it had happened 100 years ago it would have killed millions of people people by now the next stage would be of course finding out the treatment that is making vaccine or making some medicine that could kill that virus so this is about better control of diseases with the use of scientific method we have been able to control diseases how we have known the cause of each disease how do they know the cause of each disease they Uh, see the samples of blood or saliva of the diseased person under microscope and they see, see some changes something different and then they note it down so this is how they observe and then they draw conclusion that this is the disease and then they start preventive measures at the same time the scientists keep on uh, making some vaccine or making some medicine the second point is better sanitary conditions about 200 years ago the city streets in europe and in many other developed countries the city streets were narrow they were unpaved and there was no sanitary condition there were no sanitary conditions uh water would be spread in rainy days water would be spread in the streets and nobody could step out in the streets and another problem was that people threw their garbage in the streets the streets were narrow the streets were unpaved and the street were filled with garbage and on those gar garbage animals would feed so that was a condition 200 years ago how did it create problems it created problems in the sense that whenever it rained that garbage would flow with the water towards the wells which are the source of drinking water or towards the springs or it would mix in the rivers and it would come it contaminate the drinking water that was condition 200 years ago what is the situation now city streets are white city streets are paved and city streets are well drained there are uh, pipelines under the roads in every street they take out the used contaminated water outside the city and they dispose it off the second requirement was a provision of water about 200 years ago the water was provided or water was brought from distant places uh, first thing is that human population was mostly concentrated uh, near the rivers or near the wells or near the springs because water was only carried through with the buckets or with the pitchers or uh, with any containers with the development of science we got 
uh, pipes. We got aqueducts. With the help of these aqueducts or pipes, we can carry water through pipes for hundreds of kilometers. And then we have got ability to pump water out of, uh, from earth. Hundreds of uh, feet deep, uh, maybe thousands of feet deep, we can pump water out of earth. We can pump water from the rivers and we can carry it to cities, far away cities. Uh, maybe hundreds of kilometers away. They have given an example of Colorado River. In Los Angeles is provided water from Colorado River, which is 544 kilometers away. So, although this uh, figure is not mentioned in the original uh, essay, but in your text it is mentioned. With the help of scientific method, we have been able to store water storage of water that is an other achievement of a human being we have got dams now in which dams and barrages in which we store water and we can afterwards use water whenever and wherever it is needed so with the help of big storage of water we have been able to keep our rivers and canals uh, wet throughout the year otherwise previously 200 years ago it was uh, very uncertain. Life was very uncertain. Sometimes it would rain and the rivers would overflow and for months next uh, there would be no water in the rivers. But now with storage of water in the form of dams we can keep our rivers wet throughout the year and we can also avoid floods. Third point is more food and better food. About 200 years ago or maybe 300 years ago uh, we get food from agriculture. So agriculture is dependent on uh, availability of water. If there is a uh, river and from river you can draw a canal and you can irrigate your land then you can grow food. And if there is sufficient rain and rain on required time then you can grow food and that was about two or three hundred years ago that food was grown only on limited areas in limited areas where water was available where land was uh, land was rich that it could be cultivated by the invention of heavy machinery we have been able to make more land cultivatable and after this we have been able to store water that I told here in the form of dams we have been able to use that water appropriately for irrigation for agriculture now we have got more food per acre production is more and we have got better food previously it was a tragedy that you could get vegetables only in the areas where vegetables are grown, fruits only in the areas where fruits are grown. But now, in Pakistan, you can get apples grown in Australia. And in Australia, you can get uh, mangoes grown in Pakistan. From Pakistan, mangoes are exported to America, to Gulf, to Europe, to Australia. Why is it possible? How is it possible? It has been possible because we have got the methods of preservation of food and we have got better transportation system. We can transport food to far off places. Uh, although in uh, old times women, wise, intelligent women, they also made some methods of storing food that those were by drying, by pickling, uh, by salting but these days we have got better methods of storing preserving food the last point is better attitudes by attitude we mean the way we feel about some idea the way we feel about things the way we feel about solar eclipse the way we feel about lunar eclipse the way we feel about uh, black cat crossing our way that is our attitude uh, if somebody feels that wearing a charm, by charm they mean tabis, by wearing a charm he would feel safe and without wearing that charm he would feel unsafe, he would keep on wearing that charm. 
that is called superstition in our neighbor country you would be uh, normally seeing um, indian movies they are full of hindu people they are full of superstitions so in uh, almost every uh, second movie they show show their people uh, relying on some charm or depending on some fortune teller for uh, their future decisions that is superstition with the help of scientific method we have come to know that there is a solid reason behind every happening whatever happens to us in life there is a solid reason behind that and without reason nothing happens so uh, there is they the superstitious people rely on signs of good and bad luck but scientific method tells us that there are no signs of good or bad luck the black cat crosses your uh, way it does not mean that it is a sign of bad luck number 13 is no more considered bad luck and a broken mirror is no more considered a bad luck so with the help of scientific method we have been able to open our mind and think broad mindedly and we have this has, has helped us to make us less fearful our forefathers were very fearful whenever they got sick they thought that it is because of some evil spirits but with the help of scientific method we have come to know that they are not big evil spirits but they are micro organism that are spreading disease micro so micro so small that they cannot even be seen with naked eye they can only be seen under microscope they are actually spreading diseases but previously 100 or 200 years ago it was believed that they are the evil spirits which are spreading diseases to us so with the help of scientific method we are uh, thinking more open mindedly so we are less fearful in our next lecture uh, we would discuss the short questions based on this lesson thank you very much